Okay, today I'm going to go over the Pentair Easy Touch system on the outside of your house. The first part of this video, we're going to keep it basic for new homeowners or just someone that wants to adjust schedules and basic stuff like that. And the second half of this video, we'll dig into all the settings and custom functions. If you have a panel like this on the outside of your house, you'll probably also have an indoor control panel that looks something like one of these. And you can see my other pool video on the Easy Touch indoor control panel if you want to learn more. That should pop up here and I'll give you another video on that control panel. But in this video, we're going to focus on the outdoor version. Okay, looking at the control panel here, what we can see is that the pool is in the auto mode. And this is the current pool temperature, 52, and the heater is set to 90 degrees. Outside air temperature is 60 and the time and date. And that's important because your schedules will all rely on the set time and date. And I find that the clock gets out of sync kind of easy on these things. So let's start with setting the clock. We'll hit the menu key. We'll scroll down to settings and we selected it. We select clock and here hit select again and you can come down and you can set your date and time. When you're all done, hit the menu key to leave the clock setting and you're back to the home screen. Now that we have our time set, let's dig into schedules. The first thing we're going to do is hit menu and we're going to scroll down until we reach schedules. In here, we can see that we have zero schedules built for our spa. We have one for the pool, two for the waterfall and none for our lights. You also have the options for yard lights, a cleaner and some other things here. So I'm going to hit the menu key and hit schedules again and start here. Now let's just see what our pool schedule is set at. I'm going to select pool and we can see that it's in schedule mode and it will run from 9 a.m. to 3.50 p.m. every day of the week because all these black bars are selected. I have mine optimized because the power prices increase at 4 p.m. and afterwards so I want to stay outside of that 4 p.m. It's really easy to go up or down and create a new schedule by accident. For example, here, now we have two schedules and you think you're working on the original one, you hit back on the menu and now you got two schedules built. And so to delete that, we go back into that schedule and I want to delete number two. So let's scroll down to number two and we need to get to the schedule line here. So I'm going to select and I'm going to cycle until I see the word delete. Once you see that, select delete and you'll delete the schedules. Without knowing that, you could add multiple schedules by accident. Let's select this again. And the schedule mode only runs from this certain period of time and days. You could also have no schedule, like we talked about deleting, only running on certain times, or you could just set like a basic egg timer, but we're going to leave it on schedule mode. I'm going to go back to one layer in the menu here and let's go down to our waterfall. The reason we have two waterfall schedules is from 12 to 12.04 and also from 3 to 3.05 p.m. I want my waterfall to kick on and I want a lot of water to push debris out of my hot tub and into my pool so that the robot and the skimmer system can catch it. So that's why we have multiple schedules for our waterfall. If you wanted your pool light to turn on, you could select pool light, scroll down to new and create a schedule that your pool light is on from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or whatever you want one day. I don't want that, so I'm going to delete it. OK, the other basic features you should know about this control panel is the heat. For example, if you want to control your pool temperature or spa temperature and you have a heater. So I went to heat, I'm going to click pool. And the temperature is set to 90. Now that's too warm for a pool usually. Let's say 85. I hit select. And currently my heater's off because it's winter. But I can choose between solar because we have solar panels, solar preferred, or heater. So this is my gas, natural gas heater. So if I wanted the heater to reach 85 degrees today, I'll hit select. And I'll hit menu. And now when we go back, you'll see it kicks into heater mode. The pump speed increases and now it's going to work at on the heater to achieve 85 degrees. We can hear the heater kick on and that's how I heat the pool. 
Let's say I don't want that, so I'll leave the set temperature, but I want to turn my heater off. And I hit menu, and now it'll turn off. If I want to control my spot temperature, I just scroll here, set my spot temperature, set it on heater, and I can leave it on that mode because when I go back to the main menu, we are in pool mode and not spa mode. On the indoor control panel, I would have to press spa and that would kick on the spa and go to spa mode to heat the spa. Okay, the other modes that you should know here are the manual buttons. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a red light there that's indicating that it's currently in filter pump mode or basically pool mode. If I want to turn on my waterfall feature, I could just press here. We should hear the pump speed up and we'll have lots of water flow to create a bigger waterfall. If I want to turn that off, just select. I can turn on my pool lights, my spa lights, my outdoor landscape lights, my pool cleaner, but I don't want to turn that on right now. And then if you have any additional pumps or accessories, you could also operate them right here. Let's turn these off. Okay, the other basic thing you need to know here is this button right here. Auto allows your schedules to run. So we're currently in auto mode, so it's running in our schedules. If I need to service this pool system for any reason, if I need to open up my pump and clean out the basket from leaves, if I need to work on my salt chlorine generator, anything like that, I would press here and put it into service mode. And that'll prevent my... Um, pump from running or my schedule from running or from anyone inside the house from turning the pump or the hot tub on. So it basically locks out the system. Timeout mode is the next level down. And that's for, let's say you have a pool guy that comes and he wants to lock it out, but only for a short period of time. So he could press that. And then after a few hours, it'll run back into its schedule. So I'm going to press service mode here. Now the pump will shut off and no one can turn it back on unless they press this button right here. If I want to go into that timeout mode, I press it one more time. And when you're all done emptying leaves out of the basket and things like that, and you have everything primed back up, you can hit auto and it'll start to run its schedule again if the schedule is set to run right now, which it's 2.12 and it's supposed to run till 3.50 p.m. So here it's kicking back on again. Okay, so that's your Pentair Easy Touch basic system for schedules and clocks and things like that. And now in the second part of this video, we're going to dig deeper and we're going to look at every setting and menu that we can possibly look at. So let's start at menu here. And the first one are function circuits. So we'll enter that and we could have certain features and functions that occur like lights and waterfalls that run together. Next is lights. This is if you have colored Pentair lights. You could turn all your lights on, change the colors between party modes, things like that. You probably don't have those, but if you did, you could do that here. We already talked about heat. Delay cancel. Sometimes you have delays designed in. So if I hit this cleaner button, it might wait a minute to make sure that the main pump is running before it activates the pool cleaner. So that's for an, make sure you have enough water flow to go to your pool cleaner pump. If you want to override that, you can just press here and it would cancel that delay and crank up that cleaning pump right away. Next, schedules. We talked about that already. And then let's go into settings. Inside settings, you have the clock, but you have IntelliFlow. That is your pump system. So that's the brand name for Pentair pumps. If I select this, we have the option for two pumps. My, my system only has one pump. It's a variable speed. I'm going to enter here and we can see that it is in variable speed mode. You could select this and change it. Next up is we can adjust our speeds. Now, if you don't know what you're doing here, I would leave it alone or at least register what your current speeds are because this is generally set by a pool builder who knows how much water needs to flow through your filter system in a given day. But let's say we want to adjust it. We can go into speeds. And on number one, it's going to run at 2300 RPM. On number two, when the cleaner's running, it, they bumped it up to 2340. When the spa's running, it's going a lot higher to 3250. The waterfall's 3100. 
and freeze mode is 750, so a real slow mode just to keep the water moving so things don't freeze. When the solar is running, it goes up to 2800 RPM to push the water onto my roof through the water solar panels to heat the water. In the heater mode, it goes to 2700. Okay, that's how you change the speeds of your pump. Priming, ours is currently set to zero time and a speed of 1000 RPM. That's where you pour water inside your pump, turn it on, and it'll start priming until the water gets moving again. Status just tells you currently what your RPM is running. So we're at 2300 and we're using 843 watts of electricity. So if you ever want to know how much power your pump is, you can come right here for that. I'm going to hit menu and go back. And that's the end of your pump menu. Next up is IntelliClor. This is your salt cell. So inside here, if you have a salt water pool, it uses the salt water and electricity to break that chemical reaction and create chlorine. I have that system, but I currently have it off because the water temperature is too cold. If it's too cold, they don't operate. If I want to enable it, I would just select it here. And then if I want to change how much chlorine is generated, I can go up and down right here. Also, there's a one and a two here. If I go to two, you can do super chlorinated mode and how many hours to run. If you press this, it defaults 24 hours. It'll run at the highest chlorine generating um, setting for 24 hours straight. All right, back to menu. The next is your IntelliChem system, which I don't have, but if you had that, that's where you can adjust your chemicals right here. We'll go back to menu. Next one down is your heat pump. So if you have a heat pump, you can control it here. Circuit names is where you can custom label names. For example, spa is number one, and, you, and the pool builder would normally label all of these things for us. All right, now circuit functions is what happens on each mode. When I'm in solar mode, or in the solar mode, I have freeze protection. I have freeze protection for pool, Okay, so it'll kick on if the outside air temperature gets too cold and it'll push water through either the pool system or the, the solar system to keep it from freezing. And that's what we do here in California because we don't close our pools in the winter. If you live somewhere really cold, you'd probably want to winterize your pool. Okay, we're back here. Custom names I've never dealt with, so I won't try to tell you that I know what I'm talking about. Valves I'm going to select. And... Here is where you can control the valves. If you don't know what you're doing, you can cause some issues here. So I would not mess with these. If you have a two speed pump, you can adjust it here, but we have a variable speed. Next up is solar. If you have solar water heating, not solar electricity, water heating, you can go here. And I do have solar water heating. It's enabled. It doesn't use a heat pump. And what we can do is have freezing enabled That'll protect it from freezing in the cold winter. This is if your pool gets too hot and you want to cool it down in the summer, you could turn it on at nighttime. And then here's the temperature split. So our uh, solar system will start sending water to the roof if the roof is three degrees warmer than the temperature of the water. It'll continue to run until there's only a two degree split. If it gets less than two degrees, it'll shut off. So it only sends water to the roof as long as the roof is warm. All right, back to solar here. And the next up is those delays we were talking about earlier. Okay, next up is delays. And this is delays for things like valves and cool down. I'm not sure what you use this for. Next up is where you adjust your English language and metric or standard. Okay, IS4, those are the small control panels that you have out by your pool. I have one of those. If you select it, here's where you can assign what one of the four buttons does. So my first button would turn my spa or my hot tub on. My second button does nothing. It, it did stuff before, but my little kid keeps pressing it. So I deactivated it. If I wanted to make it do something right now, I'm just gonna hit select. And then I get to pick from any of these options here. And then if you don't want anything, you just reach none and hit select. Number three, I have to turn my pool light on and off 
and number four is my spa light on and off. If my toddler wants to keep turning the hot tub on and off and I don't want to hurt the pump, I could turn the spa button off. Okay, back to the menu button. Next up is your 10 button spa control. Okay, so what this menu does is allow me to control what the buttons do inside on my easy touch control panel. You have the top five buttons and what they want to be assigned and then the bottom five buttons. You can see more about that in my other video. Okay, further down, you'll see a button uh, for calibration. And here you can calibrate the water temperature, the air temperature, or your solar for any of your sensors. So if you come back to the main menu and you see that your pool temperature is just not accurate or your air temperature, you could calibrate those. Okay, done with the settings menu. Next up, we have diagnostics. So inside diagnostics, you can see the software revision that it's currently operating on. You can do a self-test here. Okay, next up inside diagnostics is chlorinator. And this is where we can check our salt levels inside our salt cell. So not everyone's going to have a salt water pool, but if you do, you select here and you can read that it's at 3350 parts per million. Now these are notoriously inaccurate. They depend on water temperature being correct too. So don't rely solely on this. Do your own chlorine, um, sorry, salt level test using a Taylor test kit, which I have another video about and I'll put a link below. Okay, go back another level. Here we can check our water temperature, our solar temperature, the temperature of the sensor on our roof, air temperature, and a few other resets, but I wouldn't mess with those. Okay, after diagnostics is nothing else. So here, that's the complete menu of this Pentair Easy Touch system. The other things you should know here are low voltage circuit breakers. So these are not high voltage. And if anything trips, you can reset them here. Only reset one time. After that, if it's still tripping, then something bigger is wrong and you don't want to mess with it. The other things you should know here are the large high voltage circuit breakers. Those are mounted further down. And if one of these pops, you can reset them one time. They're thermal circuit breakers. So if something shorts and get, these will get warm and they'll pop. But um, if you don't know what you're doing, just leave these alone and only reset it one time. Okay, so that's a, a full overview of the Pentair Easy Touch Spa system. If you have a newer model, you're probably not going to have all these buttons and a screen. And you'll have to do more of it through the indoor control panel or a wireless control panel or through the phone app. But for people that have a control panel that look like this, this is a complete overview. If you wanna learn more about an easy touch system that's inside, I have a video for that. And I also have a video coming up that will show you how to DIY upgrade your Pentair control panel with the Screen Logic system. And that'll give you Wi-Fi capability so you can control your entire pool with a phone app. If you like this video, please subscribe for future pool content and we'll see you in the next video.